This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partner, the Center for Audit Quality, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm T.K. Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to what we believe is going to be a great show today in that we have a former SEC commissioner who currently sits on some boards who's going to give us her views about board, board and governance issues. So please join me in welcoming my guest, Cynthia Glassman, who's currently a director on Navigant Consulting and Discover Financial Services. As I said, she's a former SEC commissioner and now serves as a senior research scholar at the Institute for Corporate Responsibility at George Washington University. Cynthia, welcome. Thank you, TK. It's a pleasure to be on this program, especially having listened to it a number of times in the past. Well, um, we appreciate the plug, and particularly from a former uh, SEC commissioner. So what makes it interesting to have you as a guest is we get to have a little insight. So. Let's first start by taking a look at your uh, observation of the SEC today. We know that they are overloaded with a lot to, that has come out of Dodd-Frank and a lot of responsibilities coming out of the financial crisis. So give us sort of your view as you look at them today and what challenges they face and what, what just what your opinions are. Uh, well, as you said, they are overloaded. They have huge challenges. Uh, let me step back a minute and, and describe the normal rulemaking process, which is there may be a concept release, uh, and then there's a rule proposal uh, that goes out after uh, all of the internal discussions of what it should be. Then there's a comment period, uh, normally 60 to 90 days. Then there are comments. There may be a few comments. There may be thousands of comments. And the staff and the commissioners have to go through those comments or summaries uh, before they come up with the final rulemaking uh, that then goes back to the commission. And as all of that is happening, the commissioners can actually all sit in a room, closed door room, and talk to each other because of the Sunshine Act. Uh, so that's the normal deliberative process. Now we overlay it with uh, almost 100 rules and 20 studies with deadlines that were pretty unrealistic. Uh, with topics ranging uh, all over the map, including things that the SEC doesn't normally have expertise in, such as the conflicts minerals disclosures. And that slows the process down. Uh, they need to be deliberative. They need to be thoughtful. A lot of these rules are controversial. They need to work with other agencies, with other countries. They have some actual or potential litigation. They've got a lot of headwinds. It's a difficult time. So the expectation is a lot of these deadlines that were set are just going to have to be moved back because that doesn't even take into account the normal crisis that comes up periodically as well that takes everybody off of their game, if you will. Exactly. Other things come up. Uh, the deadlines, as I said, were unrealistic to start with, especially with that number of rules. I was at the commission when we had to deal with Sarbanes-Oxley. I think we had about 20 rules, and we did have tight deadlines, and we, we did make them, but it was very tight, uh, and there was a lot of focus on just those rules, and they were all things we'd already been thinking about before. This is a much broader range, uh, a lot more rules and even tighter deadlines, I believe. Well, I know one of the things that there's great curiosity on just because of the company interest was the sort of the proxy cl plumbing and the proxy advisory accountability issues. Um, I know when they sought some comments on that, there was a lot of comments from the companies. Um, but um, do you have any insight or, or what would you like to see sort of coming out of that process? Especially with respect to the proxy advisors, uh, I would like to see uh, more oversight and uh, some accountability. These grew up uh, sort of out of the blue uh, to, to deal 
with a situation in which the institutional investors have to disclose their votes, uh, which is a very time-consuming task if they actually go through and review all the proxies themselves. The, uh, the various advisors do business differently, but uh, one of the issues uh, that I'm aware of is that they don't always get their facts straight, and uh, sometimes the companies don't have a chance to discuss with them uh, misperceptions or misinformation, and that creates problems in terms of the votes. Uh, and I'm concerned that the institutional investors who rely on these proxy advisors sometimes don't just take their advice and make their own decisions, but I understand that sometimes they actually delegate their vote in a sense, uh, which I don't think is uh, what should be happening. I think they're giving up their own fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders when they essentially say one of these advisors um, whatever they recommend is, is what they're going to vote. Well, um, hopefully something will come out relative to this that will um, help. We know there's going to be mistakes. You can't look at that many companies without being mistakes. So the thing that, the thing that would be helpful is making sure there's a process for getting any of those mistakes corrected. And I think um, certainly not here to defend uh, organizations like the ISS or Glass-Lewis, but I think they would like to get it right. They would like to have a process right. to get it right as well. So I hope that through this somehow that, that is the end result. I think everybody's going to be happier in that a, a better process, better accountability, uh, and a little more transparency. Yeah. That would all help. Now one of the things that was especially interesting as you and I sort of prepared for this was our discussions about you moving what I affectionately say to the other side. Uh, I won't call it the dark <laughs> side, I'll just say to the other side. Not the know. dark side. Right. Other side. So now you're sitting on these board seats and one of the things that you mentioned to me that sort of you found interesting was uh, the amount of compliance, sort of the compliance overload, especially when you look at, you know, here's a board that traditionally in the past has been brought together to provide <laughs> oversight on strategy and things to help improve the company. One of your observations was, boy, with all the compliance, it's difficult to have time. Talk a little bit about that, because I think that's a frustration that's probably shared by others. I hear that uh, from a lot of directors uh, across different boards. Uh, the issue is boards traditionally um, have had a couple of, of main roles, which are to help management with strategy, with long-term strategy, and also with succession planning and with compensation of the CEO and, and other senior management. What's happened more recently in recent years is that a lot of time at the board meetings are now taken up with compliance issues, uh, risk management issues, regulatory issues. And the board meetings themselves are, are typically a couple of days, five, maybe six times a year. And all of these other discussions are kind of squeezing out the time for strategy, especially. Uh, many boards carve out one whole meeting or one whole day to focus on strategy. But the balance has shifted. Uh, and the um, directors are now expected to play much more of a role in oversight on compliance and risk management um, without being there day to day in the company, that's a challenge. As I've heard you say, uh, boards are supposed to have nose in, fingers out. Uh, and with compliance issues in particular, uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to keep the fingers out uh, but still have the nose in. So it's a challenge. There are just so many questions that I want to ask, and I'm worried about running out of time here. But let me do a couple quick ones. First of all, um, um, the rulemaking. When the courts in the last proxy access, uh, access issue sort of stressed the importance of uh, making sure that there was a benefit analysis in the rulemaking. Tell me your thoughts on that. Well, I was uh, ecstatic as uh, one of the 
only ever economist commissioners on the commission. I believe I was only the second one. I had always pushed for a more better, robust, and more complete cost-benefit analyses. And we lost a couple of court cases while well, I was on the board, too, on cost-benefit issues. It's very important to have effective rules to consider the cost. My mantra at the time was, what are we trying to accomplish with this rule? Is this, will this accomplish it? Is this the best way to accomplish it? Uh, are there going to be unintended consequences? And do the benefits outweigh the costs? And the earlier on in the process you start thinking about the benefits and the costs, the more focus you can have on choosing the path that will get you to a cost-effective rule. Well, I think the courts were so um, emphatic about that. I, I think that that is clearly going to be a thought process going forward. I think that message has been sent, at least um, going forward. I'm sure the SEC doesn't want to end up in court again on those issues. But uh, cost-benefit, I'm reasonably sure, is going to be um, analyzed going forward. But one last question. So other than the compliance, Again, you have this experience, you're sitting on two corporate boards. What has been enlightening to you in your experience so far, or surprise to you as far as serving in that? What's, what's, what has been something that you sat back and said, you know, that's either something you didn't expect or, again, was enlightening? The main thing, obviously, other than compliance, which uh, we've talked about, is the the tone at the board of dealing with any all these new rules and regulations. As a commissioner, I would hear all the reasons why they may not be the best rules or the best way to do it. But once the rule is implemented, what I'm hearing at my boards and others is they stop complaining, they stop whining, and they just do it. They do it the best way they can. Uh, and that, uh, I think, is pretty much across the board from my own boards and other boards. They're engaged, they want to do the right thing, and when they have a rule, even if they didn't think it, was, it made sense or wasn't the best way or whatever, when it's promulgated and implemented and they have to do it, they do it. Well, you can join me in helping to change the public opinion out there of directors because I think for the most part, yeah, there's exceptions to this, but for the most part, everybody is really making an effort to be a, a good director and cares about the reputation and cares about the company reputation. So um, I think your comments support that. I think that's absolutely right. I, in the old days, perhaps it was different, but this is a new world. And it's, it's a lot of work to be a director. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. And the last thing you want to do is see your company in a negative light in the media, with the regulators, with whomever. You want to do the right thing. And, and I think boards these days really do. Well, Cynthia Glassman, your comments are always well respected. You've had a chance to experience, again, both sides of the fence, and that should make you a terrific director. So we wish you luck on your boards, and we hope maybe to have you back sometime, give us your experiences down the road on what's happened. So thank you for joining us. And that will conclude this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. We'll be back again next week where we'll take a look at another issue that will be helpful for you in serving on the board or on your committee. We'll see you then. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partner, the Center for Audit Quality, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.